Hello everybody, a very warm welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Delighted that you have stopped by. This is a wine channel really designed to help those of you studying the world of wine to get more from it, more comprehension, more understanding. So of course you can then go to your certain examinations of whatever syllabus it may be and of course comfortably take the examination and smash it out of the park. So welcome to another series, which is no exception. This is looking at Southern Italy, and we are on series five, the final series of Southern Italy on Sardinia. So we are in a six-part series for Sardinia. Uh, so the first two videos, that's part one, this one, and part two, the next, is available as free content on this channel. Parts three through to six will only be available on my e-learning portal. That is a wine educational portal that gives you huge amounts of resources to help pass your examinations. This is for the WSET level four diploma, what we call the D3 section. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please do get in touch. You can comment on this video below make sure you click like and make sure you click subscribe you can also get in touch by the social media means that you'll see all of the handles at the bottom of the slide without further ado let's rock and roll looking at the world of sardinia so first of all it's important to identify where geographically this is located um, Sardinia is the second largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. After this one to the southeast of it, Sicilia, which was done on the previous series. So second largest in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, so it's the third largest Italian region overall after Sicilia and Piemonte. It has a real rich and diverse topography with a distinctly untamed landscape. The Sardinian ecosystem is one of the most pristine and unspoiled natural environments in all of Italy. The body of water that flanks Sardinia's west coast, uh, so that's here off to the left hand side of this map, is the Mar de Sardinia, the Sardinian Sea. The Tyrrhenian Sea is what separates it from mainland Italy. Uh, so that's what we find. And then to the north, there is a small strait that separates it from the French island of Corsica, of course, famed for Napoleon. That's called the Strait of Bonifacio. Uh, now, due to its very strategic location in the Western Mediterranean Sea, the island has always really harnessed the attentions of big, big powers and big entities. So it's always been a land of conquest. However, the Sardi, the Sardi, the Sardinian people have always maintained a strong sense of independent spirit. It's one of Italy's five autonomous regions. A little bit of history for you. So since at least the uh, 1800 BC, Sardinia was inhabited by the native Nuragic people from whom the modern day Sardi, the Sardinians, have descended. Archaeological findings have revealed the presence of vine and wine in Sardinia in some way, shape or form since around 1500 BC, clearly therefore aligning it to the Nuragic uh, peoples, the Nuragic civilization. Then we have some traders landing on the island that came all the way from Eastern Mediterranean. The Phoenicians, they arrived around the 9th century BC. They established colonies and traded with the Nuragic people and even integrated with them. And with their influences, certainly with their Vitis vinifera influences coming from Mesopotamia, really started to uh, really advance the winemaking scene here. So we see the vine flourishing at this time. 
Sadly, the Phoenicians fall away, the Carthaginians from North Africa come, for, come through, and they defeat the Naraji. And then they started to focus on cereal production on the island. So who exactly were or what are the Naraji? Uh, the picture you see here is the Baramini Naragic complex. Uh, the Noraji is a plural form of Noraj, which is an ancient stone building consistent of a conical, um, a conical trunk, I suppose, a conical shape. You'll see the base of these here in this complex. And we saw it, of course, on the holding picture of this presentation. They are unique among megaliths and they really represent the Noragic civilization. They're symbolic to the identity of it. There are about 7,000 Naraji spread across Sardinia, and they, of course, have become a real intrinsic park in, in the Sardinian uh, people. What about after this time? So Rome comes through, uh, through this area and conquers in the 3rd century BC, building ports, cities, and maintaining that cereal production as focused by the Carthaginians. It actually ended up being really a granary bed of Rome. Uh, after Rome, uh, the Rome of the fall, uh, the fall of the Roman Empire at the end of the fifth century AD, Sardinia is invaded by Vandals, then the Byzantine Empire. Um, eventually, the eleventh century ushers in a new structuring of the island into what we call Guadicati, which are independent states of which there are four. You'll see this map clearly identifies them. So the Guadacato di Galura, for example. It's important to mention this because we have uh, today a administrative area and a famous wine, of course, Vermentino di Galura, that actually stretches from this history. So you, you find a good thousand years of historical data going back to the etymology of Galura, for example. Um, now, after the 11th century, so the 11th to the 14th century, as mentioned, this is a strategic location in the Western Mediterranean, and the island becomes very much contested by emerging uh, mites, naval mites of what we uh, what we would call our maritime republic. So Pisa, the papal states, but really Genoa, majorly Pisa and Genoa through this time, of course, uh, uh, really coming through Sardinia. Then eventually we have um, a Spanish maritime republic who um, actually today it's the, the house of Aragon, but Aragon, uh, the Corona, here you go, Corona de Aragon, um, originally didn't have access to the sea until they gained lands around the county of Barcelona. Uh, and then they gained this access and they started to become quite a powerful sea mite. Um, the Pope named it the Kingdom of Sardinia under the protection of the Spanish Kingdom of Aragon, who invades the whole island by the 15th century and remains in control until the 18th century. And this is important to note because the Spanish influence here, um, we have great varieties which we believe would have been brought across from mainland Spain around this time. So things like Cananao, for instance. Of course, this is Grenache Noir, um, which, of course, is Garnacha. Uh, Carrenano, so Carrenena, Mathuelo, uh, Bovale, and also Sherry-esque style of winemaking. Of course, Vernaccia di Oristano takes its uh, uh, floor aging very much from uh, styles like Sherry. It was eventually handed over to the House of Savoy in 1718, and then the rest is all about the Risorgimento, the formation of Sardinia with Piemonte. What about the wine business today? Sardinia, like other southern Italian regions, has had to change from being a provider of bulk wine to one of more quality. Sardinian regional and EU funding has encouraged the growth of cooperatives, uh, and that's certainly towards the end of the 20th century. Uh, it has important high quality uh, cooperatives such as Cantina Santadi in this picture you will see. Um, that was actually um, originally advised by Giacomo Takis, who is a very prominent onologist, as I'm sure you're aware, from Toscana. 
However, vineyards started to decrease in Sardinia quite dramatically when European Union subsidies were offered to remove uneconomic vineyards. And that's to, of course, counter the mass overproduction of wine that we had in the middle towards the end of the 20th century. Uh, what about to today then? So it's now concentrating um, really distinctively uh, wines that are around the identity of being Sardinian, certainly around its most indigenous varieties. So you'll see the likes of um, uh, Monica, for example, but also um, they're quite proud of Carrenano. Um, they're proud of uh, um, the Ganacha here, so the Cananao and Vermentino. Now, of course, they all have homes elsewhere, but they have been produced here for a long, long time. So they do sort of fall under that banner of being, yes, international, but also at the same time, quite indigenous. Um, two thirds of the wine here produced is uh, classified as PDO. So that's wine of quality. And exports of Sardinian wine by value have remained pretty much flat for nearly all of the last decade. OK, so that's the first on the introduction, the history and wine business of Sardinia as per the uh, syllabus for the diploma. Please do join me for part two on the climate, topography and geology. Delighted to have you on board for that. If you do have any comments, questions or concerns, please do get in touch. And you can do so by emailing info at winewithjimmy.com or commenting on this video below. We like to hear everything you have to offer. Please make sure you click like and subscribe. And also you can use the social media you see at the bottom of every slide. And if you do find yourself in the wonderful rolling green hills of Old Blighty, that's the United Kingdom, please come and see me at one of my establishments, maybe for a class, maybe for a glass, potentially for a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.